Hi, David Finkel here, author of The Freedom Formula, and I want to share with you an idea that comes in the second half of The Freedom Formula. We talk about you becoming a better leader and growing a leadership team within your company to go faster. And so one of the things we talk about here in the book is how to create a development plan for your key leaders. And think about it. Who are the one, two, or three leaders that you're responsible to grow? inside of your company so that collectively you can get more accomplished. And as you think about that, you're thinking over the course of the year, what are the two or three key items that this year I want you to focus on to get better as a leader? And then I'm going to pause and ask in this 90-day period, over these 90 days, what are the one or two skills or abilities that I want you to focus on developing? And here's the most important part. When we break it down this way, we think about it as a skill or ability that I want to practice. I don't need to go to a second separate training to get better at it. I don't need to create uh, artificial opportunities just to role play it. Instead, I can say, if my skill is something that I need to get better at, where am I weak this week? Can I practice a skill or ability? For example, let's say I was growing one of my key leaders and let's say his name was Carlos. And Carlos was incredibly good at managing his staff he was incredibly good at having tough conversations, but where he struggled was he often would nuance or finesse a conversation when he needed to be much more direct. That was one of his two or three for the year. Maybe I say in this next 90 days, I sit down with Carlos and say, Carlos, you know what would make a big difference for you in the next 90 days? If you can practice a skill that when you start a new project with a team member or third party vendor, that you have a really direct, clear expectation setting framework conversation up front and let that other party know boundaries, let that other party know criteria of success and how they're going to be evaluated. And in the past where you might have ducked certain parts of the conversation or, or finessed them, you're going to say, what are the two or three things that you need to be really clear on that in the past you might have finessed that you're going to be just hit them right on the head. And so for example, the next time Carlos is working with a new web developer, he might say, you know, um, uh, Jody, as we hire you on to, to do this web development project, just know that we never single source our web development. We always have at least 10% of our web development work for our department being done by a second person. And if we're going to pick you to work with, you can earn up to 90% of the business, but we'll always have that second point uh, uh, placement of a vendor who can help with that. In addition, you're going to have to, as part of your role, that you're going to have to work well with that second developer so that the two of you, there's no territoriality, that you're working together in many instances, sharing and cross-training the other person for what you've done to make sure that we always have that strategic depth. And I want to ask you, Jody, is that going to be a problem for you? Because if it is, then we're going to have to go a different direction with the development company that we're working with. Again, this is an example of how Carlos might be practicing the skill set of having that direct conversation in the week-by-week -week work that he's already doing. So at the beginning of the year, I want to pause and talk with my team member. What do they see as the two or three most important skills or abilities for them to grow, the experience sets that they need to cultivate for them to progress in their career? You can give them coaching of how you see it. You'll pick the two or three for the year. And then every 90 days, you need to break that down into smaller one or two goals that you have, one or two skills, abilities, experience sets that they want to really focus on in that 90-day sprint. And then in your coaching conversations, either it could be once a week, if there's somebody, or it could be once every two weeks, or more likely it's going to be probably once a month, you're going to kind of circle back here one time a month to see how are they doing in that learning, in that growth that they're working themselves. Notice I'm giving agency. Notice I'm giving control of their own learning, of their own development to them, where I'm helping, I'm empowering, I'm enabling them to do it, but I'm still giving ultimate responsibility for them to grow and develop as they go. This is how we build leaders. This is how we grow our team. And when we do this, now it's not just you with your limitation of attention and this focus you can put to one area then let everything else go. It's now you can focus on one area and you've duplicated yourself in Carlos with all of his attention. And you've duplicated yourself with Regina and all of her attention. You've duplicated yourself throughout the other leaders by doing this process that over time you're going to develop your key leaders to become better themselves.